Christopher here. Let's go over the new Elgo system here for NT8. I'm showing it in kind of one mode or one style of optics right now. Uh, this is the NQ contract. For those of you that trade the NAS100, the MNQ, uh, or the NQ, whether you're trading FX on the NAS100 through the CFD instrument or you're trading futures. Uh, this is a uh, chart is on central time, Chicago time to align with Globex, uh, Globex exchange where we're trading the NQs. Uh, here's the massive sell off uh, yesterday going into today. Uh, this morning, here was some of the, what I consider some of the higher probability trade setups today. Uh, this morning, I was taking a crack at the new lows offered, new multi a month and new lows for the year. Uh, it was not, I was also watching the German DAX at the time, so we were getting lift in the German DAX. I had a long signal. I got in. My thought was that uh, if they could maintain and hold this market into the U.S. cash session open, uh, which took place about 8.30 central time, uh, my thought was they would ramp this a bit, come in with some institutional level buy program activity. Uh, I did get a secondary buy where I added and, and cleaned out positions on this push. Now, this push might look small. It's just because the sell-off is so big. Actually, that was a pretty nice run uh, right in here this morning. But this was a substantial sell-off. I mean, it lasted from, you know, in the middle of the night, all through the U.S. cash session, all the way into... Uh, gosh, five something in the morning, I think it was when I bought this uh, first uh, setup. Uh, we were offered a higher pivot low soon after the market opened, about 8.56, I think, or 8.57 central time. So I got back in. Uh, that worked out okay. I sat on my hands. I did like the buy setup right here. And the reason is, is we did hold and maintain recent developed support. So I'm getting a, you know, lift, pullback, lift. I'm getting a higher pivot low. Uh, and, I, you know, I was looking forward to see if they would come and push this a bit higher on the day. And they were able to. Uh, I was also looking for range extension above any of the overnight early morning session. And if I got a sell signal, I wanted to hit it just in case they decided to run it all the way back down to the lows midday turn around and buy it, and then ramp it later part of the day. So I did sell. That worked out. I sat on my hands. I actually liked this buy setup. I didn't take it. Uh, I was busy doing other stuff at the time. So I like that buy. I like that buy just because this area of prior uh, early morning created support after the U.S. Open, when all the institutionals are in and playing, uh, they slapped price away from that area once, and they did it again. And then right at the end of the day, I liked the sell setup. I didn't get in it. Uh, I was a little bit busy, but if I would have been paying attention, I would have hit that. Not surprising, there was a little bleed off since we were unable to go and push and press uh, above these uh, prior or this prior pivot and get some range extension. It kind of stalled out and rolled over. That's weakness, and these markets have been weak a lot uh, going into the end of the day. Uh, on some of these days where we, you know, are kind of in the sell mode, I guess you could say. Uh, I would say the market did okay today. I'll give the market about a B minus, uh, considering how ugly that was. If they could have closed this market in this area or pierced above and parked it here, I think we would have gotten some drift higher tonight. Now in the overnight session, going into Asian session and London session, they have to work just to get it back up to the day's highs, and then we'll see if, uh, and, and really the overnight session, it's all about the German DAX uh, once the EU session. If the DAX, just watch the DAX and the NQ, how they trade lockstep with each other uh, during the night. If, if the Asian session can hang on to this and lift a bit, and then DAX comes in and uh, there's buying in the EU and they're buying of the German DAX, we could end up back here in this area price. And then maybe tomorrow, uh, if news overnight or news into tomorrow is decent, we can get some more range extension higher 
and maybe get to about the midpoint. There was some selling that came in really heavy in here. Uh, maybe we can get back up to that area. We'll have to see. Otherwise, very likely we're going to come back down and retest support here and uh, two levels of support lower. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like in the main mode if I turned on my candlestick so you can see them. So let's turn that on. And voila, there's the new trend indicator that I was showing you before. So you can see the, the patterns, price patterns, you know, equal pivot lows, higher pivot lows, lower pivot highs, all that good stuff. And here's with the drive bars. Now, uh, when somebody gets access to the new algo system, you get a custom bar type. It's a very unique hybrid indicator that I built way back in 2005 or six, and I've adapted over time. So I've had this hybrid in, uh, hybrid, uh, uh, bar type, custom bar type. First a Ninja Trader 7, then I translated it to Ninja Trader 8. So that's underlying, and then the drive bars are reading that information and, uh, and, and putting it in a method uh, of where you can see the bars. You know, I guess you could say where you can really see the micro patterns in the price action. Like, look at this, just beautiful. Uh, pullback, lift, pullback. I'll call that like an equal bottom, and then lift with a... Uh, buy signal on our new uh, new trend indicator. That's a beautiful uh, W pattern leading into that. And then the other thing we do, and actually this is an this is a more advanced version of the drive bars on my chart. Uh, it's it's got some uniqueness to it, uh, something that I'm experimenting with. But I just want to show you in the downtrend the opportunities we had after we had the momentum shift short, after the market range extended, and this is one of our high probability trades, when a market comes up and uh, hits resistance or range extends slightly above it, we get a little probe, the probe stalls, falls back uh, into the resistance area, and in conjunction with that, we get a momentum shift uh, to the downside. So let me go ahead and show you that. But there was all kinds of lower pivot high uh, with drive bar. Th these are what we call primary entries. When we have the drive bars lift to, like they touch, they go into or above, in this case in a downtrend, the new trend indicator. And then we roll over and get what's called the drive bar, which is very large a vertical bar, a bar of large vertical body. Actually, let me embolden these drive bars for a second. Hang on. Okay, so anyhow, when we lift into, we touch into or above and then roll over uh, our new trend indicator and we have what's called, what we call a drive bar, which are, is a, an extended length uh, bar. We take those as trend following trade setups. There was a drive bar to the downside meeting that criteria. Here was one right here. That's one of our primary trade setups. Uh, here was another drive bar entry right here. So there was uh, many uh, areas to get in price uh, in the selling yesterday. And this one was after the U.S. cash session had opened. This was a uh, early morning overnight session. I'm sure most of you do not trade that, but this was a very good entry to get right in the action. And actually there was one right here we did touch. There was two back to back. Actually we had one, two, three areas to get in uh, out of the US cash session open yesterday. So there you have it. Uh, that's a look at the overall uh, price action with the new algo system from yesterday and today. If you have any questions on the system, just let me know at info at N-E-U-A-L-G-O, newalgo.com. Talk to you later.